Regular programming will not be seen tonight, so we may bring you the following special program. The reason I prayed to die at 80 was because I felt that my usefulness would be finished. But it isn't. And so I'm happy to work, and I'm happy to go to heaven, and when I get there, I'll ask the good Lord to send me back after a few days of happiness there to come down and do some more work here. I'm Bill Butel in St. Patrick's Cathedral. Archbishop Fulton J. Sheen died this past weekend at the age of 84. He was so much a part of the lives of so many of us. These people passing through St. Patrick's are here to pay their last respects to a man who made a contribution to their lives through his faith, through his wisdom, and as important as anything else, through his humor. On this program, we are going to pay our respects to Fulton Sheen. We will talk about his life and he will talk about his life in the last interview he ever gave. In a moment, the funeral of Archbishop Fulton J. Sheen. I've been sweet and I've been good. I've had a whole full day of motherhood. Matchabelli brings you Aviance, a radiant perfume that lasts through the night. And what a way to start it. We're gonna have an Aviance night. Oh yeah, we're gonna have an Aviance night. Two Guys Toyland has the most wanted toys at prices moms and dads will love. Fit the voice control vet by shopper, batteries not included, now just $18.88. Shoppers Remote Control Night Hawk Max Machine, batteries not included, now just $10.88. And the Hot Wheels Scorcher Chamber by Mattel, now just $7.97. For the toys they want at the prices you want, it's Two Guys Toyland. We save money for you at Two Guys, naturally. The sun did not shine outside St. Patrick's Cathedral this afternoon when Archbishop Fulton J. Sheen was laid to rest. But inside the cathedral, which is the heart and maybe the soul of Catholicism in this city and maybe in this country, there was in the prayers and in the lighted candles of the people who came to pay their last respects something that could not be called sad. They were here, yes, to mourn the death of Fulton J. Sheen, but also, and just as importantly, to celebrate the life of the man. Archbishop Edward O'Meara, a very close friend of the late Archbishop Fulton J. Sheen, delivered the homily, the eulogy today. He recapitulated the life of Fulton J. Sheen, and he took a phrase from his life as he ended the homily. He said, bye now, Fulton Sheen. God love you forever. A voice is silent in the midst of the church and in our land, the like of which will not be heard again in our day. The vocation of Fulton Sheen is consummated. He has responded with one final yes to the call of God, a yes so final that human frailty and infirmity can never reverse it. Never was there a time in his life when he did not want to be a priest. Never was there a time in his life when he wished he had pursued another career. His presentation of the fullness of the church's message, the Catholic faith, was so powerful and convincing. One of his converts spoke for all of them and summed up this gift of his at the finish of an instruction by leaping to her feet and with clenched fists 
she shouted heavenward, Oh God, what a protagonist you have in this man. Cardinal Cook and bishops and priests offered communion to all those who filled St. Patrick's. Governor Carey of New York was one of them. And Cardinal Cook blessed the casket bearing the remains of the priest who was perhaps the most well-known priest in all the United States. May he rest in peace. Amen. May the soul of Archbishop Fulton John Sheehan, devoted brother, faithful teacher of the gospel of the Lord Jesus, suffering free servant of the Lord, loving shepherd, pastor of souls. May his soul and all the souls of the faithful departed to the mercy of God rest in peace. And finally, the procession away from the altar. Five cardinals, Billy Graham, the Protestant evangelist, leaders of the Jewish faith, of the Orthodox Church. And the coffin was borne away. It will go to the crypt beneath St. Patrick's Cathedral, where it will rest with the remains of the cardinals, the archbishops of New York. No little cinnamon gum freshens breath longer than Big Red. So kiss a little longer, hug a little longer, state your case a little longer, longer with Big Red. That Big Red freshness lasts right through it. Your fresh breath goes on and on while you chew it. Say goodbye a little longer, make it last a little longer. Give your breath home lasting freshness with Big Red. Your neighborhood Lee Miles transmission professionals offer the free 11-point check to pinpoint transmission problems before they become expensive problems. Maybe your problem isn't the transmission. Lee Miles can find out for sure and save you costly repairs. Why pay for unnecessary work? Come to the pros for the free 11-point check. Look for Lee Miles under transmissions in the yellow pages. Do it once. Do it right. Lee Miles. If a man's favorite threads prematurely lose their threads and the seams in his slacks seem to disappear, then he needs clothes from Levi's Sportswear. Levi's slacks, blazers, and suits hold their great looks because they're sewn to the tough standards that made the Levi's name famous for durability. Men's clothes from Levi's Sportswear, where quality never goes out of style. When it came to washing my special clothes, I was really nervous. Then my roommate told me how safe and gentle Woolite is. Now I use Woolite in cold water for all my fine washables. I don't worry about ruining them. They don't shrink, stretch, or fade. And my clothes feel soft, smell fresh, terrific. Woolite washing keeps the look and feel you love. I trust Woolite. Diabetes? That's not so bad. My son is a diabetic. By the time he's 30, he may be blind. Diabetes can't kill you. He could have a heart attack or kidney failure. Doesn't insulin cure diabetes? Insulin can keep him alive, and with luck, he may escape the complications caused by diabetes. But there's still no guarantee, because there's still no cure. Insulin is not a cure. Help us find one. Archbishop Fulton J. Sheen was a preacher with an actor's sense of timing and a wry sense of humor. He reached millions of people using first radio and then television as his pulpit. Fulton J. Sheen was born on May 8, 1895 in El Paso, Illinois. He was a sickly boy and he dreamed of being a priest. But his congregations were never large enough for the man within. He wrote books, nearly 50 of them. And in 1930, he took to the airwaves with a weekly radio show, The Catholic Hour. You can no more make a free nation without judges and prisons than you can make a free world without judgment and hell. In 1940, he conducted the first religious service ever seen on television. And in 1951, he starred in his own show, 
Life is worth living. It ran till 1957, and it was seen by 20 million people a week, despite stiff competition from Milton Berle and Frank Sinatra. First of all, I want to tell you about some experiments that we have been making in taking ratings of our program. As you know, that there are rating systems that test about 2,000 people a day. And these, on these testings, various indices and ratings of programs are based. So we decided to take one in Boston because I thought that, well, the program was very popular in Boston. And uh, we telephoned 1,000 men. And we asked the question, what are you listening to? 994 answered, my wife. <laughs> Sheen became a celebrity, commanding a high salary, which he used in his work with the missions. He won converts to the church and spoke for the church itself. He did not avoid controversy, as in his statement on prayer in the schools. There's no such thing as anyone speaking for the Catholic Church. I, I didn't just speak as a Catholic. I said I was interested in preserving the freedom to pray and the freedom not to pray, as I was protecting the freedom to thanks, say thanks for the mustard and the freedom to say, not to say thanks for the mustard. He stirred up controversy within the church too. Some say he refused to play politics there and was held back. He never became a cardinal, a prince of the church. He was, however, appointed to head the Archdiocese of Rochester, New York, where he served a controversial three years, a priest of the people who spent much of his time with those in jail and among the poor. He retired at the age of 74, still active and healthy, even bouncing back from open heart surgery two years ago. All through the decades, Archbishop Sheen was a friend of popes. He met every pope, beginning in his student days in 1925. But perhaps the high point of his career in the ministry was his meeting with Pope John Paul II last fall, when the Archbishop was singled out for his lifelong achievements in and for the church. Archbishop Sheen lived a long and rich life. As it was nearing its end, he was kind enough to sit down and talk about his life with Channel 7's Marie Torrey. Archbishop Sheehan moved to this apartment building on East 77th Street 10 years ago when he retired. He lived modestly in a four-room apartment with one of the rooms turned into a chapel. He spent a good deal of the time writing, including his autobiography, which remains unfinished. For the last 15 years, he avoided interviews, granting them only when a friend interceded. When Bishop Sheehan agreed to see me, I had said it would take about half an hour to film a two-part interview for the AM New York show. But as we talked, I could not stop asking questions. Call it premonition, if you will, but I was driven by an awareness that there would not be another opportunity to talk with him, and I wanted to get it all in. The feeling was on target. This was indeed his last interview. There is no one in the Catholic Church who has uh, amassed as large a list of, of notable converts as you've been credited with, from Claire Booth Luce to Fritz Chrysler to Louis Boudens, who was the managing editor of the Daily Worker. Among those, I mean, who do you, which one fills you with the greatest pride in terms of an achievement? Which one? I think the first one which was a, the lady who conducted the boarding house in Paris when I went there to study mm -hmm. as a young priest. <clears throat> I could barely speak French. So I had to talk to her with a dictionary. And uh, hence it was a great effort. But I received her into the church. And that proved, you see, that it was nothing in my power that did it. It was simply the grace of the good Lord that created the response in her. She perhaps was the most notable because there was no relationship between cause and effect. Are you saying there was no special magic that must be worked to, to no, make a convert? No, because I couldn't talk her language. Uh, what do you feel was the, the special ingredient that was able to work this kind of thing on people, make them converts? First, that I wanted to. After all, that's my duty. We were sent out to make disciples of all nations. Mm -hmm. 
I wanted to do it. It's a good way to save your soul. St. James says, if you save a soul, you save your own. And at least I could do it indirectly. And furthermore, uh, truth is effusive. And everything good tends to diffuse itself, like the sun diffuses itself in light and heat and flowers and perfume. And if I had some knowledge of truth and goodness, I just wanted it to overflow. Mm -hmm. Out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaketh. Mm -hmm. When um, you know, we, we look over your you know, incredible past, there are people who have said that you should have risen to greater heights. Um, do you feel you should have? No. Why? I do not, I do not feel that way. Uh, first of all, you're talking only about honor. And honors are accidental. Mm -hmm. uh, it would be quite vain of me to think that I should be something else than I actually am. I am very happy to have done what I and accomplished what I have done, but uh, to be more than I am, no. How do you <clears throat> feel about women not being able to become priests? Well, how do I feel about, first of all, that isn't a feeling. It has nothing to do with it. If the good Lord wanted uh, women to be priests, he would have made his own mother one. And it isn't a sex choice. And we won't get into that. It's something that's hidden, uh, that's hidden deeply in the scriptures, where a man is the symbol of Christ and the woman is the symbol of the church. As in the Old Testament, man was the symbol, the husband was the symbol of God. And Israel, was his wife. So the old prophecy, prophet said, Israel, uh, thou art my spouse, God speaking. That's where the mystery is hidden, not in the question of feeling, civil rights. It has nothing to do with that. And uh, furthermore, I don't know how we'll be improved. We are not the best, but he doesn't choose the best. Women might be better. He didn't choose me because I was better than someone else. Even God's love is blind. Bishop Sheen, of the people that you've known, people who have crossed your life, I mean, who, who, who remained especially important to you? Well, those who affected me. Mm. One would be a priest who did much to teach me to talk. I told you I was on the debating team. Well, the night before one of the big debates, the Notre Dame debate, he called me over to his room and he said, Fulton, you are absolutely the worst speaker this world has ever seen. But before you leave this room, you're going to be a good one. Now stand up there in the corner and take a paragraph of your speech and go over it. I went over it. See your mistake? Try it again. To underline certain words. Stand on your toes. Shout when you see these words. See your mistake? No. Try it again. One hour. Two hours. See your mistake? Well, being naturally quick. <laughs> I said to him, yes. I'm not natural. He said, all right, that's all. Huh. And that, that's what did it? That is what did it. <laughs> well, anyway, you have had uh, friendships with uh, people who have, uh, you've met in prison. Yes. And uh, one of the pictures that you may see, yeah. see is this Zucchetta out through prison bars. Yeah. And uh, uh, one of the, uh, the prisoners came to the prison gate with me, and I had that in my pocket. Yeah. And I intended to give it to the first, uh, the man who was nearest me. Mm -hmm. And I gave it uh, to this one, Nick. I remember him very well. And he said, this for me. And he began to cry and went back to his cell. Later on, they sent me this painting of his hands reaching out, holding that zucchetto. One of the questions is, how do you begin yeah. when you talk to prisoners? Yeah. Yeah. They think you have the white hat. They have the black hats. <laughs> Everything depends on the first line. Mm. So this was my first line. I said, gentlemen, I want you to know there is one big difference between you and me. You got caught. <laughs> it 
In other words, we're both sinners. <laughs> Let, let's start there. That was, that was an unbelievable period when you were on television opposite Milton Berle, which was Milton yes. Berle's heyday. You became good friends, though, as yes. a result of that. Milton's picture is up here. He used one of my stories. When I was given an Emmy Award, I found that everybody else who had received an Emmy thanked this person, that person, and so on. So when I arose, I, I said, well, I wish to thank my writers, too. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. <laughs> well, Milton has used that as his own. I see a picture of Jackie Gleason. Yes, too. yes. Do you have an yes. affinity for comedians? Yes. Do you? Yes. Oh. As a matter of fact, on many anniversaries of my priesthood and my anniversaries as a bishop, I try to invite in numerous people. Hmm. I will have mass beforehand. That's serious and the renewal of life, then at dinner, I don't know, a humorous person is uh, closely related to being spiritual because he never takes anything at face value. Mm. The rest of us, were, we f see a line and we follow it. They turn very quickly with a pun or a twist of thought. A humorist is one who sees through things. Serious people are those who can't see through things. They're too thick. And God made the world with a sense of humor. So that when we looked at the sunset, well, we were to see something of his beauty. The snow, something of his purity. The mountains, his power. We were to see through all of these things. And therefore, comedians are related very much to genuine piety. But you know, the sense of humor is something that people seem to be born with. It, it seems that it's nothing you can cultivate, develop. Do you know what I mean? Yes. But uh, I had took me a long time to learn how to tell a story. Really? Yes. How did you finally learn? By listening to other people tell stories. And I would say to myself, why is that story dull? and generally because it was too long. They didn't come to the punchline quickly enough. As you look back, uh, we can say that you certainly have been a rebel within the church. You've had very strong feelings, uh, and you have not shied away from, from stating those feelings. Uh, if you had to do it over again, would you do it the same way? I would try to be better. In what way? Try to be holier. Don't you think you've been holy? Not holy enough, no. Really? No. What do you mean being That's holy? Are you... you uh... Oh, I try to be more Christ-like in every single way. We find that a good many people uh, don't go to church anymore. That's not to say that they cease to be Catholics or whatever, but they don't go to church. Can you still be a good Catholic and not go to church? Not a very good one, no. And you can't be a very club, good club, club member without paying dues and without going to the club. You can't say you're a good Yankee fan unless you go and watch the Yankees play. It's very distressful to me to find a so-called, quote, good churchgoer who is capable of prejudice. Yes, they do not keep all of the law. They just keep some of it. And... Uh, the excuse is used, well, I do not go to church because there are so many hypocrites. But there's always room for a few more. <laughs> Instead of the expected half hour, the interview took one hour when Bishop Sheehan suddenly appeared fatigued. But he did not complain. He complained in behalf of others, in behalf of causes and convictions but never, never did he complain for himself. His humility would not permit it. I'd rather take a greyhound because you, you see the scenery. And, uh, more and more people are going greyhound, and for good reasons. I like the driver particularly well. He informed us as we went along and told us what was ahead and what to expect. I'd rather ride the bus than drive a car, that's for sure. I drove, I drove long enough. 
I'll let somebody else do my driving. I'll pay for it. Greyhound is the best bet, really. Go Greyhound at your convenience to Boston. 12 express trips daily. Hey, moms and dads. When you think of Fisher-Price toys for your family, think of Toys R Us. Here's the Fisher-Price dump truck. Toys R Us priced at $10.97. The pull a -tune xylophone plays a tune when they pull it. Yours for $6.97 at Toys R Us. And who could resist the Fisher-Price Sesame Street Clubhouse? It's $15.78 at Toys R Us. Remember, when you think of Fisher-Price toys at big discounts, think of Toys R Us. Christmas at Gimbal's. It's a bright Christmas world. This Saturday at Gimbal's for one day only, get bright holiday savings of 44% on a total of over $1 million worth of 14 karat gold chains and bracelets, pierced earrings, charms, and charm holders. Beautiful 14 karat gold jewelry at 44% savings Saturday only. Great gifts. Special values at Gimbal's. Bright Christmas world at Gimbal's. A missing masterpiece stolen during World War II is recovered. From Iran, a promise that observers will be allowed to see the American hostages, but the Ayatollah wants an international commission to investigate American crimes. We'll have details. A sex and drugs ring is smashed. Peter Bannon is there. We'll have the latest in the Long Island strike. And Gloria Rojas brings you the latest word on the negotiations. All coming up tonight on Eyewitness News at 11. Rosalind Carter for the Mental Health Association. For the past two years, I've traveled all over the country talking about mental health, not mental illness, mental health, to prevent those crippling emotional illnesses that strike one in four American families. We need better mental health services. I'm a member of the Mental Health Association. Join your local mental health association, too. A woman came up to me here at St. Patrick's. She had lighted a candle for Archbishop Sheen. She said she found it so hard to believe that a man who had said so much was now so silent. But I suspect the, the message, the intensity, the inspiration, and the warmth of Archbishop Fulton J. Sheen will not be forgotten. So his voice will not be completely stilled. And when people speak his name, they will say of Fulton J. Sheen, his life was worth living. I'm Bill Butel. Thank you very much. Bye now and God love you. What you're about to see is a transportation system for the Micronauts. These are rocket tubes. The electric air power terminal lets you blast up, down, forward, and back again. But that's not all. You can build a space elevator.